Hey everybody, Al Marnowski here with a lesson for Acoustic Guitar Magazine. Today we're going to be looking at Prelude Number 1 in C Major from Bach. This piece of music was written for the keyboard. Of course, we are playing it on guitar. I'm using a steel string guitar here with a pick, but if you are a fingerstyle player, this piece is still totally accessible for you, so stick around. Um, what I'm going to do in this video is play through it. Um, so you can hear it, you can see what it looks like in both hands, right hand, left hand, you can see what's going on. And then afterwards, I'll talk a little bit um, with some tips about how to go about playing it, practicing it, that kind of thing. I'll talk about the general right hand approach, general left hand approach, and there's also some pretty tricky chords in here. So um, we'll take a look at those as well. But first off, I'll just play through it. So here it goes. <laughs> Okay, so um, there it is, and now we'll talk about um, right hand and left hand and then some of those chords. For the right hand, I would just recommend doing alternating picking, consistent downs, ups. So when we start on the C chord, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Um, that makes the most sense to me for this. There might be other picking patterns out there, um, but I, I think this makes a lot of sense for this piece of music. Um, the only tricky thing is that you get a, uh, a, a string jump. So you start, uh, so like right here, that's, that's what's going on. There's a downstroke on the E string, upstroke on the G string. And that's kind of a tricky jump and um, that shows up, you know, in that first measure, but throughout and basically every measure, um, there's that string jump. It is a little bit tricky, but this piece is meant to be played slowly. Um, and doing that jump at a slower speed makes it a lot easier. Just, you know, give it some time, practice it. Over, over time, I think your right hand will become more accurate if that, you know, does pose some problems for you. And that's kind of it with the right hand, just that consistent downs and ups throughout. Um, so in the left hand, the general idea is going to be sustained. So as we play these chords, these arpeggiated chords, keeping those notes ringing. Um, not only within each chord, but also across chords. And that's where it gets a little bit more complicated, but 
if you can get it right, it just makes the music sound so much better. So as an example, just like the first measure going into the second measure. Oh, sorry, let me get that again. All right, so keeping those notes ringing as you change chords. That's the idea. And so in that example, what you can do is keep your third finger down on that C. Um, and the other fingers just kind of change around it. And that will help uh, create that sense of sustain across chords. So as you go into the next chord, you can, get, you can do the same thing. In that case, you're gonna be keeping your pinky finger down and your first finger down as you move into the next chord. Um, some of these chord changes are more difficult as you move on, so you're not able to really do that for every single uh, chord change, but as much as you can, that's what you're gonna to wanna to do. Think about a keyboard, you know, and how much sustain is in a keyboard or a piano, you know, and think about a piano playing this piece of music. This was written for a keyboard. Um, you want to kind of have that mindset as you're playing this, as much sustain as you can as you move through these. Um, so that's the idea with the left hand. Now I want to take some time and look at these tricky chords. Some of these chords are much easier. So like those, that first measure, you know, it's a C chord. You probably know that one. And as you move into these other ones, um, some of these are a little bit easier, but one of the more difficult ones is measure five. That's a, that's like one of the most difficult ones in this, in this piece, I think. And what you're going to do is take your pinky and bar on the, uh, fifth fret across the top two strings. All right. And then your first finger is going to bar on the next two strings. So this is fourth string, third string, fourth, third string uh, with your index finger. And this is at the second fret. So you got that pinky, then you got the index. And that might be difficult for you, just that. Uh, if it is, just, you know, work on that. Shake out your hand, try it again, shake it out, you know, go back to it. And one, once your hand starts to get fatigued, take a little break, you might need to spend a few days just kind of getting into this position and getting your hand used to it. Um, but once you get that, your middle finger is then going to come down and hit this C note. And this is where it really gets tough. All right. So that note is the fifth string at the third fret. All right. And that's the chord. What you want to do is have a little bit of arch in the second finger so that you're not muting the other strings with your second finger. One other thing you can do, what I found helpful, is to kind of push the fifth string that you're second finger is on kind of push it up you'll just a really little slight bend there and that'll help give you a little bit of clearance so you're not muting the other strings too um so there's that chord that's in bar five that's the first kind of really tricky chord in this in this piece the next one i think is going to be in bar uh 12 i'm just looking at the music over here to try and find it yeah so the next one is going to be in bar 12 and it looks like this So what you're gonna do first is take your second and third fingers and you're gonna so put them here. So these are both on the second fret. I've got it on the fourth string and on the second string. So two, zero, two on strings four, three, and two, two, zero, two. Then what you're gonna do is take your first finger, put it at the first fret of the fifth string. All right, and that's easy enough, but what's gonna make it really challenging is taking your pinky and going onto the low G. So this is third fret of the sixth string. And that's the chord. Um, what makes it especially difficult is getting into it. So we get into it from this G major. So the way we get into it, you know, is going from the lower notes to the higher notes. Um, so that, that makes it pretty tricky. Again, like that other chord, over time, it should get easier. When I was first learning this, I could like barely even note <laughs> most of those. But after, after about a few days for me, I was kind of able to get that chord a little easier. Um, all right, so that was measure 12. There is a string of pretty hairy chords that starts in measure 21. 
So getting into it in measure 20, you have this C7, and then in measure 20, 21, we get into this F major 7. Um, all right, that's what that one looks. First finger on the uh, first fret of the low E string. We skip the A string. At the D string, we have three, and then two, one, zero. Next one is here. Uh, so we go from F major seven to measure 22. What's going on here is you're gonna take your first finger and bar at the first fret, starting at the fourth string, you're gonna bar. And, that, and then you're gonna take your um, middle finger and put that on the third string at the second fret. That's your middle finger, this is your ring finger. So ring finger goes uh, second fret of the third string. So starting on fourth string, we get one, two, one. One, two, one, those are the fret numbers. Take your pinky finger, A string, third fret. That's a C note. So now we have, starting at the A string, three, one, two, one. And then your middle finger is going to go on second fret of the E string. So two, three, one, two, one. Again, those are fret numbers. All right. So we go from F major seven. Ah. To this chord then we can this is why i want to go over these a uh, few measures because we can take this whole shape and just move it up two frets that's going to be super helpful for you getting from this chord to this next one slide it up so we go from here So look at the tab, the tab at acoustic guitar, and you'll be able to find those exact notes. Um, but that's the, the key thing is moving that shape. And then again, we can move that shape down to the third fret to get to this G7 chord. So there is a little bit of um, changing where your fingers go, but in general, that shape just moves from here to the fourth fret fret all right so those are that that's that tricky string of chords uh, that I wanted to walk through um, after that we've we've get some smooth sailing going through some C's and G's and that kind of thing until we get to what I think is the most difficult chord in this entire tune in this piece of music it's classical music we call it a piece um, it it's this it's like a diminished chord you may know a diminished chord like this um, so the fret numbers are one, two, one, two. But what we're gonna need to do is bar the first fret with our first finger and take your pinky and stretch it down to the G, the low G. For me, getting that that uh, high E note to sound is, is the toughest part. Does not sound great, but you may have better luck depending on you know, how, how your chording is. And that's the most uh, difficult chord in the tune, in the piece, I should say. Uh, and uh, after that, we get some more C's and G's and that kind of thing, and smooth sailing from there out. So there it is. I hope this is helpful for you. Um, again, this, this tab is over at Acoustic Guitar Magazine at the website, acousticguitar.com. So you can find the tab for this, um, and you can find it right up there as well. If you have any questions, I would love to hear from you. So f please get a hold of me, um, drop a comment below, or just shoot me an email. And I'd, I'd love to get your thoughts and we can talk about it further. So good luck, and uh, I'll see you next time. Okay, thanks.